My name is Dr. Ben Newman, and I study coronaviruses for a living and try to read as many other papers about the virus as I can. But there are a lot these days. <laughs> so let's look at your questions. Um, first question is from Julie. Hello, Julie. Let's see. I had my Moderna vaccine last week. Congratulations. A lot of people want to get the vaccine. It's really hard to get the vaccine right now. I know quite a few people that are, yeah, just either very excited if they've got some kind of future date for the vaccine or just pretty annoyed that they can't get on the list, even though they meet a lot of the criteria. Uh, yeah, so well done. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. I read a blip somewhere that you should not take Advil or Tylenol before the shot. Have you heard this and is it true? Yeah, okay, fine. This is one of those things where we don't know for certain exactly what the effect would be, but here is the old fashioned science behind that and maybe that'll help. So back in the day, when you wanted to vaccinate, you would put in a little piece of whatever it is you want the immune system to look at and pay attention to. And then to make sure that the immune system would focus, you would add a thing called an adjuvant. What an adjuvant is, is some kind of chemical or whatever that will basically artificially annoy your immune system to the point where it'll then think there's you know essentially some kind of problem here and then it'll just sort of sick all the dogs on whatever it is you've just put in and the result is you end up with more immunity that lasts for longer because if you start with like more antibodies they all go downhill after a while but when you're going down a bigger hill it takes you longer to get to the bottom that's like the whole idea behind sled riding, and I think this is sled riding season in some parts of the world. Uh, not here in Texas, but some parts of the world. <laughs> so the idea is that with these current vaccines, you don't actually have to add an extra adjuvant to them, this extra annoying thing to them. They seem to do enough on their own. Um, the guidance that I've heard is that if you're someone who is taking, for example, aspirin would probably have the same effect for a long-term treatment of a heart condition or something like that, then consult your doctor. But probably they're going to say, keep taking your medication that you actually need. That's going to be fine. They're just saying for other people, if you're not normally taking one of these things, don't go in and take it, especially because you're worried about... Um, uh, I don't know, side effects or having something. Wait, and if you do get a fever, then you medicate it afterward, and that's fine. You want to keep the side effects from getting out of control, but there is the risk that if you turn the side effects right down to zero, that you will also turn the effects down to zero. One way that we um, can kind of see this is with the new results from the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Um, they finally published their phase one and phase two uh, clinical trial results and they're kind of small but at the same time they're kind of interesting so they looked in people that are 18 to 65 and they found that they got actually pretty good immunity from the vaccination and the Johnson & Johnson for anybody outside the US or anybody who doesn't obsessively study vaccines is pretty much the same thing as the AstraZeneca or the Sputnik from Russia or there's a Chinese vaccine that's also pretty much the same thing these are all adenovirus shell, piece of DNA inside, and the DNA says spike gene on it. So yeah, pretty much the same thing everybody else is doing, but you know, inside of a different wrapper. So there we go. <laughs> anyway, what they found was that with the younger cohort, they gave them the same doses as the older people. And the younger people had higher rates of what are called grade three things. So Grade one is where it's mild and honestly, stop being a baby. Grade two is where it's moderate, where you can notice something. Grade three is where a person would say it's severe, like that, yeah, I had a bad headache, I didn't like it. But where it's not, in a doctor's opinion, something that you would need to go to a hospital for. Grade four is go to the hospital, you know, this is actually serious. Grade five is you've died. So yeah, you definitely don't want there. Anyway, they only found grade one, two, and three adverse events, but the rate of grade three events was much higher in the young group. It was um, like 9% and 18% with a low and high dose versus, I think it was point, oh, was it 0.9%? 
and two and a half percent in the older people. So yeah, the older people got fewer side effects, but they also got much lower immunity compared to the younger people from the vaccine. So they are probably linked and yeah, on an individual like person basis, no, if you don't get side effects, it doesn't mean that your body ignored the vaccine. There's just a lot of range on each of these things. There's a pretty wide range of stuff that can happen. And um, yeah, the nice thing about the vaccines is that pretty much everybody seems to make enough antibody to where it looks as though it ought to protect them, um, at least for a while. And that is the point of vaccines, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah, don't uh, take a whole bunch of aspirin or ibuprofen or Tylenol or whatever right before you go in and get your vaccine on the off chance that something bad's going to happen because, yeah, th there is a reasonable, you know, there is a world where you could see that that would maybe make the vaccine less effective. Is there a ton of data that says it's automatically less effective? Not that I've seen. It's probably out there. A real immuno immunologist could probably point you to some of it, but... Yeah, so I think just uh, it's not something I would worry too much about. And if you accidentally took an Advil before you got your vaccine, it'll probably still be fine. Yeah, so there you go. Um, that's it. Yeah, thanks very much. This has been Ask Dr. Ben.